So if you don't have the desire, attitude, and the focus for something, then it's not gonna happen. I probably always overdid things. I never underdid things, I always overdid things. So I placed third at my first Mr. Olympia contest in 2008. Upon that night, I realized it's possible, but, it, but when? Uh, and at first you say, well, when? Okay, I did third, third in the world, wow. Now it's not about when, it's about, you know, how many? I just always wanted to be the most, you know, defined, massive person on stage, but move like smoke in the air. We all in the same room ain't saying nothing to each other. Everybody's game face. Like, we going to war with each other. The facility itself is great, but who is there? The energy is there. The brotherhood is there. Everybody's there for one reason. We try to get better as bodybuilders, and we try to do it as a team. Like really look at yourself in the mirror. I mean, for me, I always try to do that. And bodybuilding initially made me have to look at who I am as an individual. I want to compete. I'm an athlete. I'm a sports person. I want to compete. I want to compete against the best. And got to be a competition. I've always prepared myself to be the very best that I possibly could be. And if I know that I'm the very best that I possibly could be, and I can't get any better at the time, huh. then I'm good with that. But because coming back from a martial arts background, I understood I can learn from anyone. It could be the guy in the gym next door to me that's training, and I would steal different parts from everyone. Mm. If it fits me, I'd take this part from this guy, this part from that guy. <laughs> I want to train so hard that I'm trying to make a compelling argument with God in the universe that even if he says no, he's going to be like, well, I got to give it to him because he's just too damn stubborn. <laughs> I love that. I love that. It ain't nothing like having your hard work pay off because, you know, when I put myself, uh, to a, a task of doing something, I go all out, you know. Like when I worked for the police department, you know, I, I went all out, you know, I tried to do the best job I possibly could. When I was in college, you know, when I was in <coughs> school, I, uh, I studied every single night. When every, you were at Grambling or in high school? Grambling, okay. not, not high school. <laughs> not high school. <laughs> I did not take high school seriously at all. But at Grambling, I studied every single night. You know, I tried to be the best I possibly could be. When I was playing football there, you know, I was trying to be the best I possibly could be. And, I, and, and you know, it took a long time, but I accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish. But like I said, nothing happened overnight. I'm an introvert. So normally, you know, introverts are extroverts when they're on stage, you know. Um, so I was very, I was always uncomfortable on stage, un uncomfortable in my skin, um, but I learned at a young age that if people find out your weaknesses, they'll use them against you. So if I walk out on stage and I'm like, then people are gonna dig deeper. Like, what's wrong with this? Oh, I see this, I see this. But if I walk out confident and arrogant, they give me a once over and then don't pay attention. Kind of like if, if I walked into this building and it smelled great, but it didn't look really clean. From the smell of it, I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna look around a little bit, oh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But if the room really stunk, it was spotless. I'm going to continue looking. Where, where is that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's the way it is on stage. If you look confident, people are going to give you a once over and they're going to kind of relax. But if you're up there very unconfident and you're looking at yourself and you're yeah. like, yeah. they're going to stir you down like, oh, okay, well, you know, what is it? And they'll start picking things apart. So that was kind of my, my thought on that whole thing. I did get kind of emotional at times because when you're really going to the core of who you are, not a lot of people ask yourself that question. I would even ask you guys, how many of you this morning um, looked at yourself in the mirror after you brush your teeth, wash your face? Like really look at yourself in the mirror. I mean, for me, I always try to do that. And bodybuilding initially made me have to look at who I am as an individual. It, do I wanna do the training? Okay, fine, I can train. But do I really wanna diet? Do I really want to give up time with friends? Do I want to be misunderstood? Am I okay with scrutiny? Because unlike a LeBron James or a Kobe Bryant, unlike anything else, 
you could be criticized about performance in the office, how you speak, how you maybe how you dress that day or whatever, you didn't close a deal. We're talking about how you look without your clothes on. You know, so a lot of people in here maybe switch outfits. Um, you talk to my fiance, I mean, she probably changes three, four times sometimes, you know, did this look good, Does this look good? Because, you know, they want to be perfect. Yeah, that's a good point. But imagine your job is to be judged by a panel of judges, fans around the world about how you look in just this little itty bitty posing trunks. It, it's like your worst nightmare turned to life. Did you have a formula for uh, uh, handling pain? I know you said some things right now. Was pride behind it, but was there a formula for pride you? Pride and, tell and focus, on the, focus on the goal. Yeah, focus on the goal. Of the goal of that particular workout, of that exercise, which is all a micro of the macro, which is at the end of the year, you're going to compete. That's the ultimate goal for that year, but breaking that down. And so I would, I would have the goal in mind before I went to the gym. So I would sit down, I would analyze last week's workout. Mm -hmm. So maybe I am data analyzing in my primitive way. I've got my book there and I've written down last week's workout. So I did eight reps last week with this weight. I got to do nine this week. Or I got to put five pounds on the bar or, you know, I, I got this. So I've got a definite goal when I go in the gym that I've got to do. And I've got to push and I've got to get through. I'm going to get to that. And if I got to go through pain to get there, so be it. I'll go through the pain. Does, does that mindset bleed into every aspect of your life, or was it mainly one-dimensional? Uh, anything physical, I'll, I'll fall into that zone. Even now, Track, I'll go yeah. do it. If I do it, I you know, it. Uh, yeah, I'm riding my bike in the mountains in Spain. But I still catch myself timing myself and seeing if it was better than last week. <laughs> There's still like yeah, I got two side. voices. Yeah. I, got, I got two voices. Like when it's getting really difficult now. Before I just had one voice, now I got two. I got the one, which I, I made a video one time, put on my um, Instagram, of like, coming up this mountain, and I just got off a plane, and I feel tired, and it's really tough, and, and I got this one see here on my shoulder, and it's telling me, listen, man, you did all this shit before, you won six Mr. Olympus, and if you're tired, you don't need to go up that mountain today. You can go, you can stop, man, you can go back down. And another one, got a lion here, it's like, don't listen to you've got to do it man you started now you can't stop you've got to finish it you got to do it so try to listen to the lion like 95 percent of the time you ain't gonna believe this uh i never looked at myself never looked at myself uh it was all, all always about being in the gym working out enjoying myself and having fun and being healthy it was never the way I looked. So when I was like, you know, 285, 295 on stage, I, I, I really didn't notice anything. What do you mean uh, when you When say I was that? 215, huh? What do you mean when you say that? I didn't notice it. So people, people saw the way I looked. I didn't see the way I looked until I saw pictures. <clears throat> so you wouldn't go in front of a mirror at the gym and pose? Nope, never. Ever. So when you're doing squats and you're looking at something, there's not a mirror in front nope. of you. It's a wall. Nope. Seriously. There's no mirror there. If you, if you see, if you look, if you look at the videos, you'll see there's not a mirror right there in front of me. There were there were there were times back when I was backstage and I see a mirror, I I turn my head, you know, when I walk, walk past it because I didn't want to know how I looked because I wouldn't, I was never in it to to look a certain way, you know. I was in it to be good and to be great but not to look a certain way. That's, 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 why I, wow. I, that's why I was going to tell you now that, you know, the way I look back then, you know, that, that was all good and great, but I wasn't in it to, to look a, a certain way. I was in it to be great. So now that I'm not even competing anymore, I'm, I, I'm still the same way. I'm not in it to look a certain way. I'm in it just for, for, you know, the enjoyment of being in the gym, working out and, and being healthy. So I'm not going for a certain look. I've always just went into the gym to have fun and enjoy myself and, uh, you know, just be in there, but not to look a certain way. I didn't know I had 22 inch arms until somebody told me. And I argued him down, I'm like, no, there's no way. He's like, well, I got to take me, you know, I can prove it to you. I'm like, let's bring it out. <laughs> 
So uh, he brought it out, and sure enough, 22 inches. I'm like, wow. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I got 22 in charms, you know. You got to come in and develop your physique completely as much as you can without, because it's going to benefit you down the road. Mm. The, more, the, the more you come into the game and you want to com com bring complexity to it, it's, gonna, it's not going to make it easier. It's going to make it more complicated because you're throwing in more variables, which means that your body has to deal with more variables, which means there's so many other things mm. that could change. Yeah. So until you know the basis, the foundation of how to build muscle, how to burn fat, why are you going to overcomplicate this process, which is already complicated, and add another variable that changes the game dynamically, I mean, dramatically, you know? It's, it's, you shouldn't do that. You should learn your body, know that you know how to properly train, know that you know how to properly build muscle, know that you know how to properly incorporate nutrition before you need an advantage. There's no, there's no way you're going to need an advantage before you know how to do that because if you do, if you do it the other way around, you're going to have to learn everything else over and over again once you hit that wall and you reach that level where those PEDs are not going to do anything yeah. for you anymore except take more, which makes you, would make you more talk and put you at more risk. Yeah. So you're going to have to start all over again and try to learn it right because you learned it wrong. And that's why I tell a lot of guys, especially in certain areas, current cultures, even in, even in the Middle East, some of those guys, they think the first thing they gotta do, okay, uh, I'm training now, what, what, what do I gotta take? It's like, <laughs> no, that's, that's not the route you wanna go. It's, you're training now, learn your body, learn, learn, how, learn how you respond, we're all a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Once you learn those things, then you can add a different dynamic that you can play with and complicated even more. But when you're starting, there's no need to complicate this Do you sports. see any need of doing it if you're not gonna be competing professionally? No, you know what I'm saying, no, right? Like, no, what is the I, 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 don't, I, don't see, I don't see a reason to uh, unless you aspire to go to a high level. Right. Or unless you're doing it from some, some kind of anti-aging benefit, you know, for your, for your personal health. Sure, absolutely. But, yeah. you know, that's, the, that's really the only reason. If it's not, if it's not for competitive Very reasons. Very logical reasoning you got there. I truly never believed I can be uh, first, number one in the world. Fear of failure or fear of success? Hmm. I'd probably say both. Both. Because both can be very damaging. Mm -hmm. Both can devastate you. Um, I would say just fear. Because again, I'm insecure and in low self-esteem. So it was just the fear of... Um, but possibly being at well, I had a lot of pressure on me already because of how good I was, so I was expected, you know, to look a certain way. And, you know, um, a lot of us believed I was judged on my best, not if I was better than other people on stage. So I remember, you know, one time I, I took, after my car accident, I broke C5 and C6. Mm -hmm. And um, this is 94? Yeah, 94. Um, and I came back and I competed in that February after breaking C5 and C6, and I, I ended up winning the Ironman. And um, the next weekend I went to the Arnold and I took second. And when I had the car accident, you know, the company I was with, I don't want to be disrespectful, but everybody knows. But while I was, when I had the accident, while I was in the, car, in, in the hospital, they fired me. So, you know, when I got home, there was a, you know, a facsimile there that you've been released from your contract due to blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm, I'm okay, I'll be able to compete. So. I begged, you know, uh, for them to keep me on. So they, they instated half my money that I was making. And I went and won the Ironman, uh, and then I won the Honor Classic. Okay, see, I'm, I mean, I took second in Honor Classic. And uh, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I won my first pro show after my breaking my neck. And, you know, then I took second. You know, the Honor goes, we, we'd expect you to do that. You know, we expect you to win. I go, look, I beat all these people who've been healthy all year mm. round, and I come back from this devastating accident, and I was that good. He goes, yeah, but we expect more from you. I was like, wow. So it took a whole another, you know, at the Olympia for them to reinstate me 100%. So, um, you know, it's like a double-edged sword. It's kind of like all great athletes, and I'm not, I'm not calling myself great, but you, you look at their best or a model. You look at their most beautiful or an actor or a singer, you know, their best song, and they're measured to that forever. So one rare thing is I kind of came close in a 90 percentile my, my second show ever. So it was nowhere but either down or a little ways up from that. So and I, I just like a, a biorhythm up and down. So I was always compared to that instead of getting better and better and better. You know, I came out, um, well, when Arnold, class, uh, when Arnold called me the, one of the best bodybuilders in mm -hmm. history, that was my second pro show ever. 
You got a photographic memory? Or yeah, you, you I do. do. I okay. Do. <laughs> so you I would read uh, books and re just remember the whole thing. I, I'd have to read about three or four times. I can memorize the whole thing. That's, that's how I studied for college. I would read everything like three or four times over. Like the night before, I would stay up like sometimes all night. You know, you get, you know, you get, you get into something and you just get focused on it and you lose track of time because mm -hmm. you're so focused on what you're doing. That's you. And I would look up and I'm like, oh man, it's time to go to breakfast. I, I didn't get no sleep. <laughs> that, that happened a lot, you know, because like I said, I had that memory that if I read something enough, I could memorize it. You know, it's, it's so crazy that yourself, Brandon Curry, Phil Heath, all had accounting majors. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that or no? You, I had no idea. <laughs> you had no idea. All three of you are accounting. So maybe the formula for bodybuilding is first go get a degree in accounting and then go compete. Exactly. <laughs> that seems to be a trend. Is it all data to you or no? Uh, yeah, it's all data and analytics. Cause that's you, people don't know, but you know, I, I kept up with everything I ate. I, I weighed and measured everything I ate, and I ate the same thing, and I weighed it, and you know, I knew exactly how many carbs I was taking, how many grams of protein I was taking, everything, and I wrote everything down. Do you have it till today? Yeah, I still have it today. Kept it till today. Still have it today. Wow. <laughs> And they offered me something like 170 grand a year to go and be with that federation. That's money at that time. You I had, had nothing. Yeah, I had nothing. Crazy. So I gone home to my wife and I said, look, they offered me this. If I take this, we can get a house. We can do this. We can do that. I mean, we're living in a, still in a council place, man. I'm, I'm, I'm turned pro, but I'm still living in the ghetto, right? Not much money. I got $7,000. And much to her credit, she said, I'm, I'm out of this. So I got nothing to say about this. This is entirely your decision to make. So you need to, you know, you need to make the decision. Why did she say that? What's, what's her reason for giving it to you? Because if she had have said, do it, let's take the money, I probably would have maybe thought, let's do it. I mean, she'd been behind me all this time. The family needs something, Respect. man. Respect. You know? I, you know, the family's been behind me and now wow. I got this, maybe I should do it for the family. But she said, no, no. You've got to figure this out. And then I was like, you know what? I, re I believe in myself. And the Olympia is the Olympia. And I got a feeling, I got a bad feeling about this wrestling federation. Because the one thing that I was adamant about when I went there, I was like, I'm not a performer. I'm not, you know, if it, this is going to be like the wrestling where it's like you're a character and the winner's already kind of chosen, mm -hmm. I, I'm not in for that. I'm, 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 I'm an, I want to compete. I'm an athlete, I'm a sports person, I want to compete. I want to compete against the best and it's got to be a competition. And then, you know, Mr. Olympia is every bodybuilder's dream. Mm -hmm. So I would have to give up on that dream to go with the wrestling federation. So uh, I made a tough decision and I said, I'm going to turn down this money because I got faith in myself and I will get that money and more if I stick to this path and I win Mr. Olympia. Because I was happy that I got second place. Cause you know what they do with second place? You should have won, Phil. I had you winning. Everybody loves the underdog now. Everybody roots for the underdog. The underdog is safe. Very interesting. He's safe. And you know what that does? Oh yeah, yeah, I, I should have won. I should have won. I didn't deserve to win because I didn't own it. But I sure as hell went in front of those reporters, man, prior to the show. I'm here to win. I'm here to do this. But it, it was time to own it. I punked out. So that following year, I said, I'm not going to do any promos, nothing, until I own it. Until I own it. And that meant I don't have to talk about this. I don't have to tell people what I'm doing. I don't have to talk about what I'm doing tomorrow and this and that and screaming from the mountaintops and doing these Instagram videos and Facebook and this and that. I don't have to tell you shit. I have to look in that mirror and I have to say it to myself one damn time and look at myself and be like, man, you ain't ready. Or are you ready? Really? Okay, go do it. So then when I won the Olympia in 2011, it's a different type of Exhale, close your eyes, 
and then for some reason, my life flashed before my eyes. And that's when the tears come because you're like, you know what? All those little things got me here. From the heartbreak to the, to the lies, to the, to the deceit from others, from the mistakes I made to this and that, got me here. Like you just said, I'm a basketball player, right? Like back then, but it got me here. You damn right I'm happy. So it was, um, when you talk about what kept me going, that moment right there was like, it's worth it. No one else knows what that feels like in this sport because I was the 13th Mr. Olympia champion. So imagine only 13 people climb that mountain. 